Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Art Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, the Kickstarters I back, where you can find those Kickstarters and comics, and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So, let's begin with the book that I read. Well, it's three books, actually. I read By the Time I Get to Dallas 1, 2, and The Trinity Project, which is a prequel to By the Time I Get to Dallas. So, let's begin with credits here. Alright, so we have By the Time I Get to Dallas with story by Colin Devonshire, pencils by Juan Francisco Mayano, and inks by Dario Fosmarin, colors by Jacinto Mayano, and letters by James Reed. So, yeah, this is a pandemic comic, I think. Um, it's kind of complicated. Basically, uh, let's say about 50 or 60 percent of the world's population suddenly gets this urge to uh, go to this one spot. Let's see if I can... Br well, it's a coordinate, so I'm, I'm not going to spend the time looking for it in the book, but uh, basically it's just outside of Dallas, and everybody tries to get there. They They are either out mowing their lawn and all of a sudden they just get the urge and they stop they let go of the mower and start walking away or they get in a cab there's like a couple different versions of it where uh, people will get into cabs and or even drive and their functions like that still work up to a point until uh, eventually they they just let rage take over and uh, they I don't know they they just have this urge, desire to get to Dallas, and uh, it's really cool. Um, let's see here. So I backed this on Kickstarter, and it, it starts off a story about a, uh, a person that is in medical school, and he's learning how to do the ins and outs of medical stuff, and uh, yeah, this is a good page to show you. And it, one day, his girlfriend just says, hey, uh... I'm leaving, I'm going to Dallas, and uh, as she gets into the cab, she leaves her suitcase on the curb, but she still goes to Dallas. This is not safe for work, I just realized there's a swear word on that page I showed you. Anyway, um, so yeah, mature content for you. And then, at work, he's still mourning the loss of his girlfriend, she's just up and left, and then he gets called into work, and they're talking about how there might be a pandemic and they're going to check people's eyes and stuff and he freaks out and leaves and so they just assume that he's part of he has the thing too but really he wants to get to Dallas to save his girlfriend so yeah it's pretty crazy stuff uh, really awesome artwork story is well told and uh, here's book two and let's see here on the thank you page, it does say Gary Brantner on there. Not Gary Brantner of Rent Art Studios Comics, like I'm used to, but just Gary Brantner. Um, maybe there wasn't enough space for all the uh, letters or something, but that's how it is. Uh, there's a lot of names on there. Check that out. If you get a chance, there is a Kickstarter going right now for By the Time I Get to Dallas, um, the director's cut, basically. Um, so you could get this book and this book. And even the Trinity Project, which, uh, it explains where this comes from. It shows you even some from uh, 30,000 B.C., we see a caveman, and he's out hunting, and he goes back to his camp, and only to find them all gone, and uh, his entire camp is leaving, heading for that da spot in Dallas, way before there even a, ever was a Dallas, so it's pretty crazy. And uh, yeah, and then there's a story about an archaeologist who works for uh, an oil site, and they are about to dig there when they suddenly find bones everywhere. Millions and millions of bones. So it's a really cool prequel to the story. Good stuff. Um, very awesome stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking about getting this director's cut. I'd like to see uh, his script pages for that, stuff like that, where um, where I like to write my own comics too. It'd be awesome to see how someone else does the scripts, stuff like that. 
and the uh, unfinished art, all that fun stuff. So check out By the Time I Get to Dallas on Kickstarter right now. When I get to the Kickstarter section of my video, um, I will tell you more about that. Right now my notes are on a different page of that. So yeah, By the Time I Get to Dallas 1, 2, and the prequel, The Trinity Project. Whoops, I was showing you how to order there. So, pretty cool stuff. Really glad I read that. Um, now I'm on to mailbox. What is in my mailbox? I got some comics. Comics in my mailbox. Anyway, I got a sticker, two stickers today from uh, Carl Kessel. These are from the Impossible Jones Kickstarter I did. I don't know why he sent stickers later. Maybe because uh, I said something on Twitter or something about how I like stickers. I don't know. But, yeah, I just got some awesome stickers, extra stickers from Carl Kessel. I'm going to be reading Impossible Jones eventually. My read pile is huge. But, yep. Uh, so those will go on the uh, comic book box that uh, the Impossible Jones is going to end up in. This is also from my read pile. This is huge. It is What They Don't Teach in Art School by Will Terry. Uh, Will Terry is a fellow Utah artist, and he actually teaches art in the college in Salt Lake, so uh, that's pretty cool. When I saw this on the Kickstarters, I thought it was a cool thing to uh, get behind, and uh, it's awesome. It's got a lot of, a lot of stuff. I really haven't even been able to flip through this yet, but uh, yeah. What they don't teach you in art school, um, which I had never went to art school, so I have no idea what they even do teach in art school, but it'll be cool. Um, it looks like there's a bunch of different articles and sections by other artists and writers, and so that'll be cool to uh, check that out. So I can't wait to get this one, get to this one. Um, yeah. So yeah, there we go. See, even here is a section on how I develop my own brand. That's pretty cool. So yeah, what they don't teach you in art school. Um, I don't know if you can find this online or not. Uh, I'm sure Will Terry, when I tag him in this, uh, will be able to tell you that. But um, what I do know is people were giving him a hard time on the Kickstarter. And like as someone who's ran a Kickstarter, Especially in this time when shipping in that during the pandemic was nuts, uh, people is like, dude, just calm down, wait for it, it's coming. Anyway, so that finally came in the mail. Not a big deal. I mean, I ba I backed it in March or the spring, and it came just now. So that's not really a long time to wait. I've waited longer, even years, for some Kickstarter projects. And now onto what is next in my read pile, because. Uh, uh, yeah, I've had a couple of you hit me up and say, hey, could you read my thing soon? And a couple of you have Kickstarters that are going right now, so I'm, I bumped you up to the top of the list. Anyway, Adept, it's by, uh, I think Charlie Stickney had a, a little bit, yeah, he wrote it. Charlie Stickney, who writes White Ash. So this is in my read pile tonight. When I go to Plasma, I'm going to read this. This one has a Kickstarter going right now. It is Vampire Bloodlines, issue one. So I'm going to be reading that at Plasma tonight. And Minx, Cyberpunk. And this one is also going to be read tonight. So do check those out. I will tell you some more about some of those in a minute. All right, now on to Kickstarters. Kickstarter, Kickstarters, Kickstarter Comics. So, Kickstarter Comics has uh, recently become my favorite thing to read. Uh, more so than getting a Spider-Man or a Superman comic. Uh, I don't know, the indie comics right now are just feel like they're doing their own thing. They don't have to worry about what movie's coming out and uh, do I have to do I have to make Spider-Man do this or that based on the movie that's coming out? No, they just do their own story. If it becomes a movie, that could be cool too still, but uh, whatever. So first on my list, I'm going to go by what's ending 
sooner. So first on the list is Lovecraft PI meets Miskatonic High. And uh, I already have issue one. This is a one part one and two of Lovecraft PI meets Miskatonic High. And it's in my read pile. I haven't read it yet because uh, I already know that I love uh, Miskatonic High so much that I don't need to read it to know that I'm going to be back in the next one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's an awesome story, and I even went out and Miskatonic High is a whole separate comic from uh, Lovecraft P.I., and so I went to Lovecraft P.I.'s Etsy page, and I picked up two of the trades that he had out before this Kickstarter, before the whole Miskatonic High thing. So, those are also in the read pile. I'll, like I said, my read pile is an entire cabinet full of comics, and uh, I'll get to them when I get to them. But, check out Lovecraft P.I. meets Miskatonic High on Kickstarter right now until January 29th. That is literally this week, so, um, yeah. Uh, you will not be sorry. You could you could probably get all the Miskatonic High and Lovecraft P.I. comics. It would be pretty expensive, but it would be well worth it. Like, uh, yeah. I, I highly recommend you back this Kickstarter. You check out all the previous comics, all that fun stuff, because it is well worth it. It's an awesome read. It's an awesome book, awesome art. Just all around, you will not be disappointed. Check out Miskatonic High meets Lovecraft P.I. on Kickstarter right now till January 29th. Next on Kickstarter is Fractured Shards. It is a 48-page comic book that is not safe for kids, but, uh, yeah, so it takes place in a dystopian future, in a world where they are separated into two different sects, sect, uh, factions, that's a better word for it, to, so that you don't mishear me, um, it is separated into two different groups of people, the Light and the District, and, uh, the Light are basically the people that uh, live in a paradise, and the district is the slums of this world, and um, you meet a detective, Vitro, who, uh, he's working the most horrific cases, and uh, most of the times, uh, they these cases involve both groups, instead of just going to one district or the other, uh, he, he manages both of them. Anyway, the artwork on this looks awesome, and, uh, the writing looks sounds awesome, and I've been hearing a lot about this comic, so check out Fractured Shards, 48-page comic book, on Kickstarter until February 1st. Now, here's one that I'm really excited about. Uh, it's called Live, For Live Forever, and uh, it's about a vampire. So that's why, one reason I'm excited about it, because I'm into the vampire stories. Um, Peter Pan, the vampire is my own story, then I love uh, things like Vampire Diaries and Interview with the Vampire, all sorts of vampire stuff. White Ash, that's a good vampire story. Um, so, Live Forever is by a Mexican creator that lives in Japan, and he was writing Live Forever to help himself cope with the loss of a brother. And uh, So, if you want a vampire story that is full of friendship, and full of dealing with grief and coping and all that fun stuff, check out Raul Trevino's Live Forever on Kickstarter right now. And I think you can find it on uh, Webtoons, but I haven't read it on there yet. I'm going to wait till the hard copy to check it out myself. So do check out Live Forever on Kickstarter until February 3rd. Next up is Switchblade Stories number 2. It is a 28-page retro art and it is by Chris Askham. He's doing the whole thing, writing and storytelling, art and everything. Uh, so it is a retro romance girl gang grindhouse comic bonanza, in his own words. And it looks amazing. I Every time I see the artwork for this, I'm like, holy crap, this is so cool. And yeah, it's blowing me away. And I have no idea really what the story is about, other than it's kind of a Themla and Louise kind of thing going on. Uh, it is two girls that I think love each other and uh, are running from something. Running into people that are just, I don't know. 
all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, we'll find out when I read it. All that fun. So, check out Switchblade Stories number two on Kickstarter till February 4th. Oh yeah, and here's By the Time I Get to Dallas, the Creator's Edition, Make 100. It is on Kickstarter until February 4th. And like I said, I'm probably going to get it. It's 140 pages of scripts and pencils and awesome story. So yeah, if you're, if you're interested, you could get the Collector's Creator's Edition, and you can probably get the, uh, the regular copies. So check out By the Time I Get to Dallas, the Creator's Edition, Make 100, on Kickstarter until February 4th. And here's one called Endless Moons. It's one that I just discovered today. And it is a black and white comic that is about aliens and it's sort of like Star Wars meets Zelda and an Anastasia in space kind of story. Um, the only hang up I have with it really is that it's in black and white, but I've read some black and white comics. They're okay. I, they're okay. It's with it dealing with a redhead. I would prefer that I be able to see it in color, but maybe one day there will be a color version. Anyway, yeah, it sounds awesome. Anastasia in space sounds like a good story. And uh, Endless Moons is on Kickstarter till February 9th. Check that one out. Adventures of Liara Rowe is a not-safe-for-work romance with sci-fi in it. It's by Jen Hickman. It has 28 pages of... I don't know. Uh, I don't really know what it's about. All, all I know is I saw Jen Hickman was working on it, and I wanted in on it. So check out Adventures of Liara Rowe, not-safe-for-work not sci-fi on Kickstarter right now until February 11th. The artwork am looks amazing and uh, it is definitely not safe for work. It deals with a lot of uh, romance and fun stuff like that. Check out Adventures of Liara Rowe right now on Kickstarter until February 11th. And now I'm on to Temerity the Runaway. Temerity is a, well I did read the uh, preview on webtoons and I'm it was awesome I'm in um, it depicted a, a a giant really huge ship uh, going into warp drive and then a small ship kind of tagged on in the draft went through the warp with them and uh, they end up bringing that person on board and he's Japanese and an alien on the ship uh, in a cute little skirt new Japanese so she was kind of the uh, interpreter during this and uh, it was really cool I liked the way the artwork looked it's the artwork is by Chad Harding uh, a uh, Harley Quinn artist from Utah and the story is by Gemma Young who is also a Utah writer so I'm all for it support Utah artists I'm from Utah so check it out Temerity, The Runaway, is on Kickstarter until February 11th. Killer artwork, killer story, and uh, yeah, if you don't believe me, check out the preview. There is a link on the Kickstarter to the Webtoons preview, so check out Temerity, The Runaway, on Kickstarter right now until February 11th. Cult Heroes is on Kickstarter until February 13th. It is a story about a world where there are heroes everywhere. The skies are literally crowded with capes and uh, Kickst Cult Heroes is about a girl named Kick uh, Cult Hero and a partner Razorback Mary and they go on a spree of eliminating these heroes and the artwork is insanely awesome. Uh, if you ever wanted to see what Jack Kirby mixed with David Mack would look like this is what you would get. Uh, the pages are really cool. The The artwork is amazing. The coloring is got that retro scratchiness to them and then there are there's typography mixed into the uh, artwork. It's pretty cool. So it is 24 pages, mature readers, and it is Cult Heroes on Kickstarter until February 13th. Next up is My Super Best... Oh, not My Super, sorry. Let me start over. 
The next up is Super Best Friend number one on Kickstarter till February 18th. Super Best Friend number one is about a sidekick and basically what he does is he goes around videotaping uh, the hero and putting it up onto a live stream but one day he accidentally gets uh, his favorite superhero's secret identity out into the public and he is doing everything he can to now protect his super best friend and uh, so that's what this whole 48 page story comic is about is him trying to set it right of accidentally letting out the superhero secret identity and it is it comes from Jason Inman the writer is uh, the host of a podcast I listen to called Geek History Lesson. They have yet to do a Multiple Man episode, so if you're listening to this, please do a Multiple Man episode on Geek History Lesson. Anyway, yeah, uh, I'm excited for this story. I have Jupiter Jet, another story by this person, in my read pile, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what goes on in this story. I'm tempted to get the, uh, to have them do an ad for my Peter Pan the Vampire on Geek History lesson, but uh, I don't know if it's in the budget for me. We'll see. Um, because I have possibles, I have a lot of stuff going on that might take my funds away from me, so anyway, you don't need to hear all that. So, check out Super Best Friend number one on Kickstarter till February 18th, and you could probably get copies of Jupiter Jet along with Super Best Friend, so do check that one out. Next up on the list is Vampire Bloodlines 2. That is that, uh, the comic I'm going to read tonight is Super Va uh, Vampire Bloodlines number 1. And so, uh, I'm excited to see what the story is. The artwork looks awesome. It, it printed in a mini comic, I think it was about 6 inches tall by 3.5. So, it, it's a different format, but it's cool. It's print. I noticed it was printed at Kablam. Kablam is awesome. They print my comic book. And uh, yeah, check out Vampire Bloodlines number two on Kickstarter till March 14th. There is a awesome IV cosplay cover that uh, I've been seeing pictures of that on my Twitter feed. So it looks awesome. Check that. Out. Check out Vampire Bloodlines. The uh, first issue had a cover by. Uh, Rizian on Twitter that I saw and that's how I came about finding this one and you know it's a vampire story so I'm in um, now I'm on to shows so I've been I finished up watching Doom Patrol season 2 it was awesome and uh, yeah a lot of crazy stuff happening in that they even mentioned a part where uh, you don't see Alan Tudyk anymore and so another guy says oh yeah he's gone he got a voice gig somewhere else and so he's you're not going to see him anymore it was kind of funny that they fourth walled it like that anyway I'm reading or I'm watching Stargirl now during my work breaks and breakfast and lunches and so that's a really cool show I'm loving it Luke Wilson's in it he's doing an awesome job and uh, Amy Smart's in it too I Amy Smart I think she was from the butterfly effect so yeah it's pretty cool um and as you know, uh, I'm listening to Geek History Lesson, so that's one of the podcasts you should check out. Check out House of Indie podcast, and Two Scout Geeks, which is uh, has the same person in it. Um, two Scout Geeks basically is just two guys that co talk about Scout Comics. It's a really cool show, and uh, Scout Comics is doing a lot of cool stuff, so it's awesome to hear about what I could be getting in, all that fun stuff. Now, let's see... Oh yeah, and uh, you may notice this bright yellow shirt here I'm wearing. Um, it's a Weezer t-shirt that I drew, and uh, I'm currently wor waiting on approval from Redbubble. I've sublib sub submitted, that's the word, submitted my artwork to uh, Redbubble, and uh, it will be looked over from Manhead Tees, who runs actually runs the uh, Weezer merchandising thing, so cross your fingers and hope that they are cool with that and uh, yeah check it check out my Redbubble page if you want to see some awesome t-shirts that uh, coincide with the Rent Narb and Peter Pan the Vampire universe all that fun stuff so if you're listening to a podcast you think I should know about let me know about it I'll check it out 
And tell me about your campaigns on Kickstarter. Uh, I will check them out. I will give you a shout out just for sending me a link to say, hey, check out my Kickstarter. And uh, who knows, I might even back it too. And that would be awesome. And if you have an independent comic book that's not on Kickstarter or anything, it's, all, it's just already out there, send me a link and I'll check it out and uh, give you a shout out on that too. So that is the end of my show today. I'm going to stop right there. Have a nice day. Bye.